Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Consulting Engineer, Pivotal, Dave Sire. That's me, really? Oh. <laughs> um, right, before we, stick, before we start, I have a piece of business to transact with Josh. Josh? Yes, Doc? Ha! <laughs> you know what we're going to do. What are we going to do, but Doc? Selfie. Oh, okay. But first, I just want to just tell a story because um, it was actually three years ago. Uh, the last time I was on this stage at this conference was three years ago in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. With Oh, yeah. Josh Long. That was, was probably like, the last time you were on it as well. Uh, in, in DC, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, we've done Let's other ones since then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the last main yeah. stage. There you go. That's the story. That's awesome. Why do we do this? Why? Why not? <laughs> Amazing. That's why we do it. Right. I think probably three years ago, I don't know, but I doubt if the conference was even 1,500 people. Yeah. This is 3,000. This is more than amazing. Greater than, yeah. So crazy. well done, everyone. <laughs> so cool to have you. All right, selfie. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's get a photo. There's a guy. T there's a guy in the front row taking a photo of us taking a photo, which I think is kind That's of awesome. Cool. Okay, everybody, one, two, three, three. say open, open source. source. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay, there we go. Okay, Doc. Thank you very Break much. Break a leg. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Um, they took this. There's supposed to be a cross on the stage. <laughs> it's gone. Oh my god. Um, it's probably about here. Everybody see me? How's this shirt? <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, it's about Spring, and the conference is now Spring One Platform. So I thought, well, Spring and Platforms, um, let's have a look at how they fit together. And that's what we're going to do. Um, and I called it Cannibal started a couple of months ago, and my Twitter feed was just full of people yelling at each other about um, you know, servers and the serverless, and what's a function, and what's an app, and all that stuff. And I mean, Richard basically nailed it. So I thought I'd put that one up and say, look, there's, there's nothing to fight about here. <laughs> we're, we're all going to win this game. Um, and so this is how we're going to do it, basically, using Spring. So just a reminder, everybody's seen this before, right? This is an um, intentionally pyramid-shaped um, um, different layers of abstractions in the cloud. So you've got functions, applications, containers, virtual machines. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Commonly, they get labeled this way. OK, this is just a way of thinking about it. I, I'm not going to get hung up on labels. Function as a service, platform as a service, container as a service, infrastructure as a service. And you know, since the F1 is a little bit new, I've got um, just a few keywords here to compare the platform as a service with function as a service um, in terms of developer operator experience, because that's kind of what I care about, mainly developer, actually, um, if it's me. And um, I'm not going to read the slides, but the, the bold words are probably worth looking at. So apps versus functions. On the function side, you've got words like event. So you're triggered by an event. And um, you don't really care about where it came from. You don't care about how you attach to the sources and sinks of events. So um, I borrowed this from um, Olivier via, actually via Olivier, I borrowed it from um, a guy called John McKim. And this kind of illustrates, I think, the, um, the, the principle of why that's a pyramid, right? So you've got sort of a, a basic hierarchy of needs, like in life. Um, software needs things to run in production. And these, um, this ladder of needs is what, is what you require. And so you can see there's a pattern, right? So if you go from infrastructure up to functions, you increase the level of abstraction. You push more things down below what James Waters calls the value line. So the stuff that I, as a developer, don't care about anymore is blue in this diagram. 
So that, you know, that illustrates the point really nicely. Um, and what it actually, the reason that this caught my eye is you've probably spotted it by now. <laughs> the function one is a bit of an odd one, right? It doesn't quite fit the pattern. Um, so the, the, the application layer is still gray. Um, and that's because you can write a function which is very simple. It takes data, it transforms it, and spits it out again. But to make that into a business solution, you have to link them together. You have to orchestrate them. So the application logic ends up living outside the service. It's not in the, fun not in the fast service. But it is under the control of the developer somehow. And that, that is either, this is why I'm pointing this out, that's either a bad piece of analysis <laughs> on our part, right? This might be the wrong model to think about it. Or it might be a sign of immaturity, right? This is new, so people haven't really started developing solutions in this area yet. So just, you know, something to think about there. You manage your own orchestration if you have functions. And it's not like there aren't products to do that, right? There are. Um, and actually, I'm going to talk about one of them in a minute, so I should shut up. OK, so cloud abstractions, um, again, those are the four in a nice hierarchy. The reason I'm showing them again is because as a developer, you know what, I, I just don't care. It, it's fine if somebody has to care. But if I never have to build a machine image again, I'm happy. I'm perfectly happy. In fact, I probably don't even care much about containers, except people give me them all the time. They say, run this. You know, you need to run that because it's got a database in it that you need to use in your service, that kind of, that kind of problem. So I care about, to some extent, the container layer. I definitely care, can as a Spring developer, I definitely can, can care about um, the applications and about the functions. So let's have a look at um, each of those layers, and let's see what Spring has to offer. You know, what can I use? What can I sort of um, you know, accelerate, my, accelerate my iteration with? So in the function layer, um, I don't have a logo for a Spring Cloud function, so this is just a screenshot. You don't have to read what's on it. It's a screenshot of the GitHub repo for Spring Cloud function. And that's um, something that you'll be hearing about in the conference if you go to my talk on Riff, um, or if you go to Jeff Holland and Oleg uh, Zukarowski's talk about um, Azure functions. They'll be talking about that project as well. The other thing here um, is a little bit, um, I don't know, sort of a surprise to me even that I put it there. But that's, in case you didn't recognize it, that's the logo for Spring Cloud Dataflow. And Dataflow actually is, uh, is more than one thing, but a part of Dataflow is actually an orchestration for functions, isn't it? Um, the, the, the individual stages in a Dataflow system are. Um, they're migrating to Spring Cloud Function. Actually, that's another piece of news. If you go to some of the Dataflow talks, you'll hear about that. Um, so the Dataflow team are busy doing that at the minute, converting all of their existing applications into functions. So that's one, one tie-in with functions. And the other one is just the orchestration, because it links them together. I'll show you some pictures that make it more obvious later. Um, of course, in the... Um, Platform as a service layer, you've got the bulk, the rump, um, pretty much the, everything we do in Spring. Um, Spring Framework, Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, they're all just you know, splattered on there in random order. You pick the stuff up, you use it, you build applications with it. So of course, we're very busy in that layer. Um, and then the last one, I just wanted to highlight this very quickly because it's an interesting project. So another logo list project, <laughs> um, Spring Cloud Kubernetes. And Spring Cloud Kubernetes is a really nice little project that we've just moved out of incubation into a full release cycle. And it's a nice project. Um, one of the nice things about it is it's, uh, it's a purely community-driven project. So it came from a couple of guys who were at Red Hat, actually, at the time. I think they've left now. Um, it's a really good little project because it only does things that they needed, right? They were running real stuff in production. They found you know, they had itches to scratch. They scratched them, they put them in this repo, and they've continued to use them. So they've continued to iterate, and we're now ready to start releasing it. Um, if you want to know more about that, 
you could grab Thomas Risberg or Spencer Gibb from the Spring Cloud team. And they'll tell you more, more about it. Um, so that's what Spring is doing. Um, so let's just, before we leave, let's just have a look at what's, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the give and take. What are you getting and what are you giving? So there's a trade-off, right? That's why we have these abstractions. Yeah, you want to be, ideally, at the highest level of abstraction that you can be for the problem you are solving. But that doesn't mean that you won't need to use different levels of abstractions for different workloads, for different solutions. Um, so the higher the level of abstraction, like I was sharing with that um, you know, triangle graph, the higher the value line, so the more things you don't have to care about as a developer, but the less control you have over the pieces that are below you, right? So you, I mean, I don't really want to care about some of them, but um, if I'm in a function and I wanted to connect to a database that wasn't supported by my you know, trigger mechanism, then I just can't. I can't control that. So um, you've pushed that. You've pushed that. You've pushed something down, and you've pushed it away that you might need. So if you need to go back to it, then you need to go down to the next level of, of abstraction. So not all abstractions are useful for the same problem. But I firmly believe this. If you take a solution-oriented view, so if you are solving a business problem and you want to build something that works, probably you're not just going to be using one of these abstractions, right? You're probably going to end up using two or even maybe three. I doubt if you'll use the fourth, like because I don't care about infrastructure. Somebody else does. So a solution architecture, maybe it looks like this. You've got inputs, outputs, um, streams of events. I've got some um, data stream processing along the top here. I've got microservices. I've got databases. They're all connected. And they're all delivering value. They're delivering some. Um, you know, solution to a business problem. And if I had fancy, you know, drawing lines on the soft on the on the um, screen software, I could kind of draw pick draw um, rings around the bits that I thought were good fit for function as a service. That's kind of along the top there. A good fit for platform as a service, maybe the you know, left, middle bits, and maybe that bottom database is packaged as a solution inside a container that I just take from a vendor. And so I'm going to use all three abstractions in the same solution. And probably I'm going to use a little bit of Spring in all of them. So that's great. Um, and, you know, as software engineers inside an enterprise, we find that we want to pull from all of those pieces and use all of those abstractions to solve a business problem, we might find that we are more productive if we have all of that stuff in one place. And so I think that's what Onsi is you know, motivating in his talk. So I'm glad to have followed him, because I didn't have to explain this diagram very much. Um, the big blue triangle in the middle you could call it PCF. You could call it you know, a pivotal product. But actually, it's probably more than that. It's probably um, every, everything that you, all the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into um, delivering that platform and probably you know, creating services like the examples that Onsi gave, um, services to bind to, so that you can have triggers for your functions. Right? You need events to flow through this system. So you're going to be building. Um, you know, uh, platform services that work for you. You know, maybe the Amazon ones, the Google ones are great, but they don't work for you because they don't have your payment feed in them, or they don't have your um, audit alert feed in them. But you can build that into your own platform, and I think that's kind of what Pivotal is doing, and that's the, uh, the motivation behind PCF these days. So that kind of just leaves me with to um, bookend my presentation. I'm to topping and tailing it here with um, a tweet from another uh, senior pivotal person, my boss, James Waters. He mentions Bosch. That was the reason he tweeted this. But really, he's saying the same thing as me, right? He's saying, this is what we are delivering. It's, it's all about a platform that you can choose the right abstraction for, 
and you, they can play together inside the same solution. And that's, I think, where uh, the value is and where um, uh, Pivotal and Spring and you, um, the users, are all working together to deliver more and more value every, every, every day. And that's actually it. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.